chills, uh, allergies, common colds. <laughs> Hey, good morning everybody. Hope you've been well. I'm Dr. Mike. I'm a Navy flight surgeon and uh, it's been a minute. It's been a minute since I have been able to record anything and upload it to YouTube. Since the coronavirus pandemic hit, things got real crazy, real hectic around here, but I think we're starting to understand the virus enough on and how to mitigate it and keep our fighting force healthy. And so uh, now that things are starting to slow down a bit i think i can start recording and making content again if you watched my last video on how to become a navy flight surgeon uh, in that video i talked about how generally um, our time is split 50 percent in the clinic and then 50 percent in the squadron and that squadron time is you know where you where you tend to do your flying going to any kind of uh, meetings that need a medical presence a, a physician presence or maybe you're just catching up on administrative work or maybe you're just taking kind of a personal day so in that last video there has been a, a comment or two asking if i can do a day in the life of a navy flight doc and and so i thought hey you know what maybe that's a good idea maybe i'll do a two-part series one uh, a day in the life of a navy flight doc for a clinic day and then a day in the life for one of my squadron days pre-covid i was in clinic two and a half days a week uh, two full days so from 0700 to about 1600 and then my half day was uh would be about 0700 to noon the clinic that we're working with kind of is trying to limit the amount of people coming in and out of the clinic in order to mitigate the risk of covid and uh, exposing uh, those who are really sick or with comorbidities to COVID. And so the main hospital is kind of taking uh, the majority of sick, sick cases. And uh, we are doing mostly our morning right now, um, seeing patients like, at, like normal, but then our second half of the day is virtual medicine, things that we could take care of over, over the phone or video conferencing. And so that's been a, a, a quite, quite a nice change, actually. It, it's been more efficient and um, I think we've been providing better care this way because there's a lot of issues and conditions and things that we can easily take care of uh, over the phone and doesn't necessarily need a face-to-face -face. and I think patients really appreciate that because they're busy they have things to do they have child care issues especially now during these times and uh, or you know they're at work and they can't just find the time to, you know, to leave they, they have a mission to accomplish and things to do and so being able to knock things out, simple, simple cases uh, over the phone or, or through webcam, that, that seems to be, um, I think, going to be uh, the way moving forward. And I, I hope so too, but today's a Wednesday. So my, uh, my clinic days are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, we have sick call from about 0800 to 0900. And then I see chronic visits and administrative visits like flight physicals and uh, just anything that, you know, documentation that some of these military people need signed off. I, I see that from like 0900 to, to noon. And then I usually get home around 12, 1230, maybe, maybe around 1300 uh, because I, my computer is set up here to do telemedicine. I got all the access to all the medical records and everything. So it's pretty nice. Well, it's almost... 0800 so I better get going. I want you guys to meet the first love of my life. Uh, her name is Topanga. With me since 2008. You could tell with all the sunspots and uh, the dents and the disfigurements. She's been through a lot but you know what? She's been through thick and thin with me and uh, even though Carly wants to get rid of her I'm gonna drive her until her last breath. Good old Topanga riding nice and smooth like she has about 137,000 miles on her, but she's a Honda Civic, so, you know, technically she should be able to run another, what, 100,000 miles? These things usually last forever, but she's been good to me. Um, obviously, Topanga, named after uh, my, my childhood crush, uh, Boy Meets World. A lot of you youngsters probably don't even remember that show, but that was one of the best shows ever. So we are on our way to clinic right now. It's located on the Navy base. It's about a 10 minute drive from my house to the clinic, which is awesome. I hate commuting. That is one of my biggest pet peeves. I just cannot stand it. I think it's a waste of time. I just get angry if I have to drive more than 20 minutes to work. I mean, unless you 
enjoy commuting because maybe that's your time to clear your head, listen to music, relax, um, maybe listen to a podcast. That that's good for you. Um, do you? I just cannot stand it. I'd rather be able to get from work to home quickly so I could relax at home and you know get things done at home. Carly, on the other hand, when I first met her, she was she would always complain. Why can't you handle 45 minutes? What's the big deal? You could do that, blah, 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 blah. But now that she got a little bit of a taste of how nice commuting less than 15 minutes to work is, what does she say? She can never go back. So take that for what it's worth. I took a brief look at my schedule when I was in clinic yesterday to see what today's schedule is like. And it looks like we only have a couple of people. Um, actually scheduled uh, I expect to see maybe four or five during sick call and then I think we just just have maybe th two or three flight physicals and just a couple of aches and pains and sniffles and stuff like that that we, we just have to address I'm a little bit late right now it's 0805 um, the sick call starts at 0800 but usually the corpsmen uh, our, our medical assistants they they don't normally bring the patient back until about 0820 for the first patient because they have to check them in and get their vitals and get their story, get a brief you know, history and physical. And then they put them in a room, they do all that stuff, and then uh, they present to us. And that usually doesn't happen to about 0820, so I got, I got some time. But yeah, we're, uh, we're going through the gate right now. Hey, good morning. How are you doing? How are you going? Thank you. So this is our little workspace for our air wing. Uh, tiny, teeny tiny, and you can you can see it's pretty old looking. Most uh, government facilities, you know, were built a long time ago, and we try to maintain it the best we can. But uh, we don't get too much funding to to get all the nice stuff like private hospitals do. But yeah, this is our little spot. This is my desk. That's the other doc's desk, and we have the new doc checked in. So we have three people for this small office. It's cozy, gets the job done. So usually I just I come in here, sit down on my desk. The dual monitors are nice. Uh, that's a patient room, that's a patient room. No patients right now. This is our electronic medical record called Alta. So we sit here, patients populate. Again, maybe three to eight probably sick calls a day, depending on how busy. And then probably have about eight to ten appointment slots uh, for chronic visits, administrative things, flight physicals, all that good stuff. But again, the kind of schedule was pre-COVID, post-COVID. We have a lot of virtual appointments, a lot of telemedicine that we can uh, that we're kind of shifting toward. It seems to be more efficient. Patients like it. We like it. Uh, a lot of things can be handled without a physical exam. Physical exams are important, but a lot of things, you know, people are busy, so a lot of things can be taken care of over the phone. And so. All right, so it's about 12.15. I just left the clinic. I'm heading on home. Um, pretty much done for the day uh, in terms of my in-person clinic responsibilities. I wanted to record a little bit of the clinic itself. The other provider was there. We had an intern in that small little workspace as well and uh, it got kind of busy, so it was just not worth the effort trying to record in that tight space and making everyone else feel uncomfortable. Um, plus, I didn't want to risk violating HIPAA, which I'm sure all of you guys have heard of. It's, it's the patient privacy laws, and uh, yeah, uh, you guys didn't miss out on much. I saw a couple of sick call visits, you know, uh, a lot of common things we see in the military. We get like a lot of rashes, um, a lot of musculoskeletal issues, back pain especially, shoulder pain, knee pain. Um, you get your sniffles, uh, allergies, common colds. That was, that was a jet flying over, that loud noise. But yeah, we, uh, we get a, lot of, a bunch of minor stuff for sick call, like an like a urgent care, we'll see UTIs, yeast infection, STDs. Uh, once in a while you'll get the serious, you know, acute abdomen, appendicitis, 
uh, gallstones, kidney stones. You get you get some actual real medicine, but for the most for the most part, you don't really see anything too exciting. And luckily, I had just enough downtime to finish all of my afternoon telemedicine stuff. So now I am pretty much done for the day, which is very nice. Uh, I think I am going to maybe catch up on some questions uh, we like to do practice questions we as in like the medical community especially those of us in the military who are GMOs general medical officers or flight surgeons uh, who haven't finished residency yet um, we generally like to do some reading uh, you know, New England Journal of Medicine they have like good review articles uh, or just like up-to-date or uh, do some questions like on Mixapp. that's kind of the question bank we use just to maintain some knowledge some proficiency because as you can tell, the military is pretty healthy for the most part, right? So we don't see too much disease, too much pathophys, and so to maintain kind of our, our knowledge and our skills uh, from preventing it from atrophying, we, uh, we kind of have to do extra reading and, uh, and, the, and these kind of cue banks. But pretty much done for the day. I, I do have a meeting at 1400 from 14 to 16 to discuss uh, return to work guidance for aviators, for pilots, and those who fly in aircraft. With COVID being a big deal, and we don't know how it's going to affect them uh, in the long run, right? Like if, they're, if they develop any kind of pulmonary or cardiac complications from it, they're being very uh, cautious about how to move forward with specifically aviators and air crew and people flying in aircraft thousands of feet in the air. Of requiring breathing masks, breathing devices. What, if any, uh, extra steps need to be taken to ensure that they don't have any complications if if uh, they do have COVID? And we just need to figure out what to do with them. It's going to be really tricky. I mean, there's going to be a lot of disagreements, I'm sure, and uh, I guess we'll figure it out. But that that's a meeting at 1400, and uh, after that, it's just my own time. I'm just kind of kind of wing it.